Okay, let's take a look at a question that at first glance just looks like a, a silly little uh, mental exercise, but we'll see these, this kind of question will be very important to us in this course. So uh, the question is, let's look at just part A first. We want to find a function whose derivative is 7 times the function itself. And I, I should have said, let's, let's look at our function. Let's let it be uh, the function be y equals y of t. Okay, so we're looking for some function whose derivative is 7 times the original function. Now, one thing we know is that when we take the derivative of an exponential function, we essentially get that function back. So we might want to make a guess uh, in this case that we're looking at e to some power. And so maybe a e to a k times t, something like that. And when we take the derivative in this case, y prime is also e to the kt, but remember we multiply by this constant here, k. So if we're looking at part A, and we were to guess, say, that y equals um, e to the 7t, then what we would get when we take the derivative is that y prime will be e to the 7t. And then because of the chain rule, when we take the derivative of the 7t, we get an extra factor of 7. Okay, so what this says is that the derivative is, that's the equal sign, the derivative is 7 times e to the 7t, which is in fact y itself. So we could even rewrite this as y prime equals 7 times the original y. All right, and let's look at this other one. Based on what we've just seen here, part b shouldn't be terribly difficult. Uh, we want negative 5 times the function, so how about we guess that y is e to the negative 5t. When we take the derivative then, we get um, e to the negative 5t times the derivative of negative 5t, which is a negative 5. So the derivative is negative 5 times the function itself, e to the minus 5t. Now we want to make an important observation at this point, and that is that if we were instead for part b to have guessed that uh, y equals uh, 3, e to the minus 5t, when we take the derivative, we have y prime equals, there will be a e to the minus 5t, and then we need to multiply by a negative 5 from the chain rule, which would give us negative 15. Uh, but let's remember what that really would be is it would look like this. Uh, that would be negative 5 times 3 e to the minus 5t. And if we think about it, this 3 e to the minus 5t is the original function y. So this is negative 5y. So this says the derivative is, and if I follow the whole chain, the derivative is negative 5 times the function itself. So uh, this function, y equals 3 e to the minus 5t, uh, satisfies that condition as well. And what we would see is that in general, if c stands for any constant, if we have y equals c e to the minus 5t, the derivative of that is going to be y prime equals negative 5 c e to the minus 5t. Again, the c e to the minus 5t is y itself, so that's negative 5y. Okay, so for any arbitrary constant, this function here, y equals c e to the minus 5t, we'll have a derivative that's five, negative 5 times the original function. Okay, so that's that. Let's move on to uh, looking at the same sort of question, but with second derivatives. So let's start out here. We want to find a function whose second derivative is 16 times the function. And let's try to exploit the same idea. I mean, if we take the derivative once of an exponential function, we get an exponential function take the derivative again, we get an exponential function again. But um, if we have our y equals e to the kt, when we do the first derivative, that's going to be y prime equals k e to the kt. And then when we do the second derivative, so we do the, set, the derivative of this guy here, and remember k is a constant, so we don't need the product rule, we'll have e to the kt, 
And then we have to multiply by the derivative of kt, which is k. And that'll be k times this k, which would give us k squared. So we can see that if k happened to be 4, then this would be a 16 out in front. So if y equals e to the 4t, um, then the first derivative is going to be 4 e to the 4t, and the second derivative is going to be 16 e to the 4t. So sure enough, e to the 4t will do that. And uh, again, based on the idea we saw in our last um, examples, um, in fact, if we have y equals some constant e to the minus 4, or e to the 4t, when we take the first derivative, we're going to get 4 times that constant e to the 4t. And when we take the second derivative, we're going to get this 4 times that 4, so that'll be 16c e to the 4t. Okay, And you can see the c e to the 4t is our original y, so that would be 16 times y. Okay, So we can see that any constant times e to the 4t will give us a solution to a. When we go to b, when we multiply twice, what we want here is we want our k squared to be 5. So that means we need a number that we can multiply by itself to get 5, and that would be the square root of 5. Okay, so for b, our, our solution would be, and let's go ahead and put the constant in any, on these. So if we had y equals c e to the square root of 5t, then uh, when we take the derivative the first time, we're going to get y prime equals square root of 5 times c e to the root 5t. And then when we take the second derivative, we're going to get root 5 times root 5. And the square root of 5 is just the number that times itself is 5. So root 5 times root 5 will be 5 c e to the root 5t. So in fact, this function satisfies condition b. Now, let's go on to c, where we're looking for a function whose second derivative is negative 16 times the function. So let's get all this stuff out of here. And we might take a guess that our function would be, say, for example, y equals e to the minus um, 4 times t. Remember, we're looking for the second derivative to be negative 16 times the original function. So if we did our first derivative, and let me just work downward now. Um, our first derivative would be negative 4 e to the minus 4t. And uh, it's looking pretty good, but wait a minute. Let's see. When we take the second derivative, negative 4 times negative 4 will be positive 16 e to the minus 4t. And what we want is for the second derivative to be negative 16 times our original function. So this guy is not going to do it. So we need to go somewhere else and look in a little different place for this guy. And what we want to remember is, uh, if we had, say, the y equals um, sine of t, then y prime is cosine of t, and then the second derivative would be the derivative of cosine, which is, in fact, negative sine. So when we take a, a start with a sine function and do a second derivative, we essentially get the negative of our original sine function. But we want the number 16 out here in front. And remember, when we have a chain rule, if we have some value here, each time we take the derivative, it ends up showing up out in front of our trig function. So let's, let's try y equals um, sine of 4t, uh, because we'll get a 4 out when we take the first derivative, and then another 4 for the second derivative. OK, and so the first derivative is going to be the derivative of sine is cosine 4t. And then by the chain rule, we have an extra factor of 4 out in front. And then when we go to do the second derivative, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we have negative sine of 4t. And then by the chain rule, this 4 will uh, multiply this 4 to give us a 16. So we'll get y double prime equals negative 16 sine t. Uh, sine 4t, but remember sine of 4t is our original y, so the second derivative is negative 16 times our original function. And um, we'll cut it off here shortly, but I just want to point out that um, just like before, we could actually have a constant there, say a constant c, um, 
times sine of 4t. And when we do the second derivative, we're still going to get negative 16 times c sine of 4t. Not only that, but if our original y was a constant times the cosine of 4t, when we do the first derivative, we're going to get a negative sine, and then the second derivative is going to give us a negative cosine. We still stay negative, and we're going to get a cosine. So you might want to think through this one yourself, but y double prime is going to be negative 16 times c cosine of 4t. Okay, so we could not only use sine 4t, but we could use cosine 4t. And most importantly, as we go through the course, we would see that our y could even be some constant times sine of 4t plus some other constant times the cosine of 4t. And it's still going to satisfy this condition we're looking for. Let's try that. Um, when we do the first derivative, here the derivative of sine is cosine. We're going to multiply by 4, so we get 4c1 cosine 4t. Here the derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine, so we have a minus sine of 4t. But by the chain rule, this 4 multiplies the c2, so we have 4c2. When we go to take the second derivative, um, here the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we're going to have negative sine of 4t. This 4 is going to come out and multiply that 4, so we have negative 16c1 sine of 4t. Over here, the derivative of sine is cosine, so we'll have cosine 4t. It's positive, so that doesn't change this sine here. And then this 4 multiplies that 4 to give us 16. And at this point, we can factor a negative 16 out. And so we have negative 16 times c1 sine 4t plus c2 cosine 4t. And we can observe that this part here is, in fact, our original y up here. So we have y double prime equals negative 16 um, times y itself. And we'll take a look in the next video at why this is so important in certain physical applications.